This is Chapter 28, Module 1, The Male Reproductive System. The learning objectives for this module are to describe the components of the male reproductive system and to describe the roles played by the reproductive tract and accessory glands in producing spermatozoa. The reproductive system is the only system that is not essential to the life of the individual. The male and female reproductive systems produce and store specialized reproductive cells that combine to form new life. The reproductive organs also secrete hormones that play major roles in the maintenance of normal sexual function. The reproductive structures include the gonads, or organs that produce gametes and hormones, ducts to transport the gametes, accessory glands that secrete fluids into the ducts, and external genitalia. The male reproductive system is functionally different from the female reproductive system. The female produces one gamete per month whereas the male produces up to a half a billion sperm per day. The male gonads are called the testes. They secrete the male hormones called androgens. They also produce male gametes that are called spermatozoa or sperm. These sperm will travel from the testis to the epididymis, to the ductus deferens or vas deferens, to the ejaculatory duct, to the urethra where they are ejected from the body. These structures are called the reproductive tract. The reproductive tract also has accessory organs that secrete fluids into the ejaculatory ducts and the urethra. These glands include the seminal glands or seminal vesicle, the prostate gland, and the bulbourethral gland. The male external genitalia include the scrotum, which encloses the testes, and the penis, an erectile organ that contains the distal portion of the urethra. The scrotum is a fleshy pouch suspended inferior to the perineum and between the base of the penis and the anus. Follow the path of the sperm as it would travel from the testes, to the epididymis, to the ductus deferens, to the ejaculatory duct, to the spongy urethra, and finally out the external urethral orifice. Note how the ejaculatory duct and the prostatic urethra join to form the spongy urethra. During development, the testes of the fetus are suspended in the abdominal cavity by connective tissue. During the seventh month of gestation, the fetus grows very rapidly, and the testes are pulled through the abdominal musculature to descend into the scrotum. The accessory structures accompany the testis during this descent. A spermatic cord is formed with the ductus deferens, blood vessels, nerves, and lymphatic vessels, which are all bundled in connective tissue and extend from the abdominal cavity to the testes in the scrotum through the inguinal canal. On this diagram, note the location of the testis and the ductus deferens or vas deferens at seven months and then again at birth. Prior to seven months, the testis are located in the abdominal pelvic cavity. The scrotum is divided into two cavities and a thickening in the scrotal surface marks the partition between the two scrotal chambers. The dartos muscle is a smooth muscle in the dermis of the scrotum that causes the characteristic wrinkling of the scrotal surface. The cremaster muscle is a layer of skeletal muscle deep to the dermis that will contract to pull the testis closer to the body or relax to move the testis away from the body. Sperm production in the testes requires temperatures slightly lower than body temperature, so the cremaster muscle will relax to move the testes away from the body to cooler temperatures or will contract to move the testes towards the body to warmer temperatures. On this diagram, identify the scrotum, dartos muscle, cremaster muscle, prepuce, testes, epididymis, and spermatic cord. There are two layers of connective tissue in the scrotum. The more superficial connective tissue of the testes is called the tunica vaginalis. The deeper connective tissue is called the tunica albuginea. The tunica albuginea has fibers that are continuous with the fibers of the surrounding epididymis. Fibers from the tunica albuginea also extend into the testis and form partitions called septa. These partitions all converge near the entrance of the epididymis. The septa subdivide the testis into lobules that contain about 800 tightly coiled tubules called seminiferous tubules. Sperm are produced in these tubules. The tubules combined are about a half a mile long. The seminiferous tubules connect to a network of passageways called the reet testis that connects to the epididymis. The newly formed sperm travel from the seminiferous tubules through the reet testis and into the epididymis. Here you can identify the septa, the seminiferous tubules within the septa, the reet testis, 
and the ducts of the epididymis. In the interstitial tissue surrounding the seminiferous tubules are spaces that contain large interstitial cells called Leydig cells. These cells produce the androgens, which are the dominant male sex hormones. Testosterone is the most important androgen. Sperm are produced in the walls of the seminiferous tubules. The process of sperm production is called spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis begins at the outermost cell layer in the seminiferous tubules and proceeds towards the lumen of the tubule. During this process, stem cells called spermatogonia, in the outermost layer, divide and differentiate into primary spermatocytes, which form secondary spermatocytes, which differentiate into spermatids. Finally, spermatids differentiate into spermatozoa in the layer of the seminiferous tubule closest to the lumen and will be released into the fluid of the lumen. Spermatogenesis includes three processes called mitosis, meiosis, and spermiation a topic for a future module. It takes about nine weeks for the spermatozoa to be formed and released into the lumen of the seminiferous tubules. The spermatozoa, however, are not physically mature and cannot yet fertilize an oocyte or a female gamete. Other parts of the reproductive system are responsible for the maturation, nourishment, storage, and transport of the sperm to make them viable for fertilization. On this diagram, note the spermatogonium are the outermost cells of the seminiferous tubule and that the spermatozoa are the innermost cells that contain flagella and are suspended within the cytoplasm of the nurse cells. Also identify the dividing primary and secondary spermatocytes and the spermatids. Note as the spermatogonia develop into primary to secondary spermatocytes to spermatids to spermatozoa the new cells move closer to the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. Once detached from the wall of the seminiferous tubule and released into the lumen, the spermatozoa will be moved by cilia into the rete testis and into the epididymis. The epididymis is the start of the male reproductive tract and is a coiled tube almost 23 feet long. It is bound to the posterior border of the testis and has a head, a body, and a tail. The epididymis is the location where the spermatozoa will be stored and protected while they mature. The epididymis will also recycle damaged spermatozoa and will monitor the fluid produced by the seminiferous tubules. The spermatozoa will mature in the epididymis but will remain immobile. In order for the spermatozoa to become modal, that is to be able to actively swim, the spermatozoa must undergo capacitation. Spermatozoa become modal when they are mixed with secretions from the seminal glands. Identify the epididymis and how it connects to the ductus deferens. The epididymis stores the spermatozoa to allow them to mature. Once they mature, they will move into the ductus deferens where they will be kept until emission. The spermatozoa leave the epididymis to enter into the ductus deferens. The ductus deferens is a tube that is 16 to 18 inches long. It begins at the tail of the epididymis and ascends through the inguinal canal in the spermatic cord. It curves over the urinary bladder and descends down toward the prostate gland and seminal glands. The ductus deferens can store spermatozoa for several months before emptying the sperm into the ejaculatory duct. The ejaculatory duct is a short passageway that penetrates the wall of the prostate gland and then empties into the urethra. The spermatozoa will be discharged into the ejaculatory duct at emission with peristaltic contractions that are controlled by the sympathetic nervous system. Several accessory glands help to produce semen, which is a mix of secretions with distinct biochemical characteristics. These glands are the seminal glands, the prostate gland, and the bulbourethral glands. These glands will activate the spermatozoa, provide nutrients and buffers, and propel the spermatozoa and fluids along the reproductive tract. The seminal glands are extremely active secretory glands that produce 60% of the semen volume. The fluid from the seminal glands contains high concentrations of fructose that is easily metabolized by the spermatozoa to give them energy for motility. Seminal fluid is slightly alkaline to neutralize the acids of the prostate gland in the vagina. Seminal fluid initiates the first step in capacitation so that spermatozoa can begin beating their flagella. The prostate gland sits below the urinary bladder and encircles the proximal portion of the urethra. It is surrounded by smooth muscle fibers. The prostate gland releases a fluid in the prostatic urethra that is slightly acidic and forms 20 to 30 percent of semen volume. Prostatic fluid contains an antibiotic called seminal plasmin, which helps to prevent urinary tract infections. 
The bulbourethral glands are located at the base of the penis. They secrete thick, alkaline mucus that helps to neutralize the urinary acids in the urethra. The secretions of the bulbourethral glands also help to lubricate the glands of the penis or the penis tip. These secretions will be emptied into the penile urethra. Here you can identify the glands that secrete substances of semen. Locate the seminal glands, the prostate gland, and the bulbourethral glands. The typical semen is about 2 to 5 milliliters and contains a sperm count of about 20 to 100 million spermatozoa per milliliter of ejaculate. The ejaculate is the volume of fluid produced by ejaculation and contains the secretions of the seminal glands, the prostate gland, and the bulbourethral glands. The urethra passes through the penis, a tubular organ that transports urine to the exterior and semen into the female's vagina. The penis has three portions, the root, the body, and the glands. The root is the fixed portion that attaches to the body wall. The body is the tubular movable portion that contains erectile tissue, and the glands is the expanded distal end of the penis that surrounds the external urethral orifice. A fold of skin called the prepuce or foreskin surrounds the tip of the penis. The prepuce attaches to the neck of the penis and covers the prepucial glands, which secrete a waxy material called smegma. Smegma can support bacteria. Circumcision or removal of the prepuce is often practiced to prevent infection. The erectile tissue in the penis is a dense network of elastic fibers and vascular channels. At rest, the blood flow into the erectile tissue is restricted. During an erection, the blood vessels dilate and the blood flow into the erectile tissue is increased. There are two different masses of erectile tissue. The corpus cavernosum is found on the anterior surface of a flaccid penis. The corpus spongiosum surrounds the penile urethra. Identify the erectile tissue, the corpus spongiosum and the corpus cavernosum. The corpus spongiosum surrounds the spongy urethra, while the corpus cavernosum is on the anterior aspect of the flaccid penis. This ends Module 1 of Chapter 28.